Hi, how's everybody doing? Jeremy here from Homeless House Estate and Gardens. Welcome back to our old kitchen, one of my favorite rooms here in the entire estate. Um, always enjoy getting the opportunity to cook in here. And one thing that I just love about Homeless House is uh, unlike a lot of other uh, places that you might go and tour, um, not only is this um, a place that we're not necessarily a museum. And what I mean by that is we still use a lot of all the different aspects of this property such a such a great property and and things still are still functional here so it's not just if you were to come and tour homeless house it's not just like you're going to walk into a room and there's going to be an area roped off and you can't even enter and it's set up uh how it, it's been for the last hundred years uh that's kind of not our philosophy here this is a functional plant plantation so as you walk in you can still come and sit on um some of the furniture you can uh experience the entire place um and so I just love being in the old kitchen and it gives us an opportunity to do some cooking in here uh, and it's just a great time. So we've been having so much fun with these videos and the dish that I wanted to do today was I was going to do a side dish. We're going to do the classic Cajun side dish, corn mock shoe. Corn mock shoe, this dish given to us by our Native American ancestors, corn as well. Um, uh, one of the seven nations that founded Louisiana cuisine, um, the Native Americans, and they gave us this dish, corn mock shoe. Now, with, now we're going to get to the corn mock shoe in a second, but since it is a side dish, I always I don't just want to cook a side and just be done with you guys. I want to show you just how simple this is something that I would whip up at home. And I would just serve this with any kind of, any one of my main proteins that I might use at home. Um, steak, corn mock shoe, fantastic. But today I, ha I just happen to have some really beautiful redfish that we've been serving in the restaurant and i figured hey let's just cook a little while we're while we're doing the corn mock shoe let's go ahead and cook a little redfish and just talk about how easily these dishes can come together once you have a little bit of prep done now granted i know at home y'all if, if you have someone who could just chop your onions and celery and bell pepper and your tomatoes you'll be good to go um but honestly probably cutting the onions is the longest part of of doing this all everything i like to do here for the most part is like i like to have a dish that can that comes together pretty quickly so right now all i'm doing is giving this redfish a good seasoning of salt and pepper on each side and then i'm going to go into a hot skillet that i turned on already got heated i'm gonna pour a little extra virgin olive oil in it and i'm instantly seeing uh the oil kind of coat the bottom of the pan and start to give off a little smoke. And that's what I'm looking for because I'm not cooking with Teflon here. And when anytime you're cooking fish, um, it's real easy for the fish to start to stick to the pan. Teflon definitely helps, but you don't have to have Teflon. So what we're going to do is just as long as we get that nice sizzle, there we go, whenever it goes in, that's exactly what we're looking for. Just going to throw that in. And then every now and then I have a fish spatula but any old spatula would do. I like to, anytime I throw my fish in, I like to give the skillet just a little shake just to see that that fish is moving. I don't want to mess it too, with it too much because I do want to get a nice crust and caramelization on the outside of it. But high heat, we're just going to let this go. We're going to cook it for about three minutes on each side, flip it after about three minutes. Fish is going to get perfect. So now um, let's go ahead and talk about corn mock shoe. So this is just so incredibly simple to do. A couple things that we did. First of all, we're, of course, there's a lot of different options when it comes to corn, different varieties of corn, and also frozen, canned corn, all that stuff. You can use any one of those products, but of course, here at the restaurant, and if you were doing it at home to get the best version of this dish, you're going to want to use fresh. And what's great about fresh corn is you really don't have to cook. You really don't have to cook it. You know, this dish reminds me of growing up. Whenever, um, I, you know, I grew up, anytime my dad would grill something on the grill, we'd almost always have corn on the cobs with a little plastic thing stuck on the end and a little bit of butter. And just that fresh corn just heated up. You don't have to boil it when you're doing corn on the cob. You don't have to boil that corn for several minutes in it. All you need to do is let that hot water heat up the corn. But we've got some cut corn here. Whenever it's fresh, you can eat it just how it is. You don't have to necessarily cook the corn. So you really get the best flavor from the corn. And I wanted to show you a little trick. And what I like to do, how I go about cutting it. Whenever, obviously, after you shuck the corn and you remove all the little fibers, you can come onto a cutting board and just start cutting the corn off the kernel. But just as a trick that I like to do is I like to go ahead and get a bowl that I'm working with. And this is how I did all this. I start off by just placing the corn down in it. I take your knife and then I carefully just start to cut that corn off. And this just keeps from making a big mess in the kitchen. Oftentimes, those little kernels will start to fall all on the outside of your cutting board and just go everywhere. 
But if I just do this, now I am keeping all that corn right here in the bowl. Just all stays there. And that's what I did. I did, this is about five years of corn. Now it's six. And that's what we're going to do. Now another thing that we're going to do and an advantage you get from cooking with fresh corn is that you actually have a lot of flavor in the cob itself. And one thing you can do just as a little extra step is you can do what's known as milking the cob. And that's just taking the side of a knife and really scraping that cob and getting some of the juices off of it. And just let that fall down in your corn as well because there's a lot of intense flavor in there. And we'd love to keep that if we can. So now that we got our corn shucked and ready to go, watch how quick this comes together. A couple of minutes, we'll go, let's just come back to the fish. Going to give it a good flip. Let me, uh, let me raise up a piece of this because this red fish is just looking so great. And it's exactly what we're looking for, guys. Just starting to get that nice brown crust on the outside. Salt, pepper, fresh fish. That's all you need. Now, uh, now that I see it's not sticking, I am going to lower it just a bit so it's not getting too brown on the outside. We're just going to let that go. All right, let's start cooking this corn mock shoe. Got us a nice hot cast iron pan. And let's talk about that real quick. I'm going to get some andouille. This is just some diced andouille sausage. If you don't have andouille, smoked sausage is great. Or another option you might want to consider, these recipes are, for, uh, are um, flexible. Instead of putting sausage, just dice up some bacon. You can throw the bacon in the pan, have the bacon start to get crisped up, and then you're going to render out all that great bacon fat and then you can cook in that as well. So plenty of options there. And then let's talk about, for a second about cast iron. I love any chance I can get to cook in cast iron because in my opinion, although it's not great for 100% of all situations, I would probably say it's great for 90% of situations. To me, it's just one of the most perfect pieces of cookware. Well, why is that? A, it's flexible into how you can use it. I can cook something in here. I can grab two uh towels i can pick this uh vessel up and i can stick it in the oven so i can start searing a piece of meat add some liquid say short ribs i can transfer this to the oven and it's going to cook great but because you're dealing with a si si solid piece of cast iron what it really does great is holds heat and distributes heat evenly throughout the entire cooking process and no other Every other piece, of, whether this skillet or any other, any other piece of cookware that you see, is all trying to emulate what this does naturally, and that's just evenly distributing heat. A lot of times you see the skillets, they got a thick bottom. Well, that's to hold the heat in. Well, cast iron just always does that perfectly. So we got our, back to our mock shoe. We have our andouille cooking down. And what we're going to, now, normally I would let this go for maybe about five to 10 minutes. And I'm really looking to get some nice color on the outside of that andouille. And plus it's rendering down. It's starting to develop flavor. It's releasing some of its fat down into the, to the dish. And then that's going to coat all of our other ingredients as we cook. But as that's kind of doing its thing, now we're going to come back. How many times we do this? We're going to add our trinity. Onions. Chopped celery. And some diced bell peppers. Nice colored bell peppers. We're going to get those down in here. And then just start to cook all that up. It's really looking to get some nice wilt on that. You can see we're starting to have that start to come together. It's not, this, is, this isn't going to take long. We're doing this and we're live and we're doing this in real time. So at any point, you got any questions, don't, don't feel free. Feel free to hit us up in the comments. We love all your shares and likes and comments and interacting with you guys. We're, we're having so much fun doing these cooking demos. Fish is looking good. Actually, I see it's close to being done. So I'm actually just going to turn it off. Let it sit in there while we finish up our mock shoe. So I went ahead, I threw our trinity, our onion, celery, bell pepper. I normally like to let that go in first, then come back with our diced garlic that just went in. Uh, the reason I do that is uh, because this pan is so hot, uh, garlic has a tendency to burn really fast. If you were to just throw garlic into some really hot oil, it's going to turn brown and burn really fast and even turn a little bit bitter as it gets dark. So to avoid doing that, I like to just give my onion, celery, bell pepper a bit of a jump start, then come back with our garlic and let that cook. Now this is starting to wilt, wilt down and become nice and translucent, and that's exactly what we're looking for. So once we get to that point, we're ready for the corn to come in. Get some corn down in there, and look, you see I really milked those cobs, and I have a lot of that natural corn juice and starch. And that's what we're looking for. So much flavor in there. So we want to keep all of that. So we're going to keep, get that corn in there. And then we're going to add some 
diced tomatoes, and a little bit of tomato sauce. And this is going to kind of be the binder. The tomatoes themselves will start to cook down and let their juice out, and, and, the, and the tomatoes themselves, and, the, and that will start to cook down. Jesse's flagging me down here. It looks like we have a question. What you got, Jesse? Where can they find this recipe? Where can they find this recipe? Great question. Well, we're going to post this recipe. should be going live on our Facebook page any second now. Jesse's giving me the five fingers. So in five minutes, we're going to have this recipe on there. But also, a great treasure trove of all the recipes that we've done in the past is on our Homeless House website. If you go to homelesshouse.com, there's a bunch of tabs. One of the tabs that we have on our website says resources. Click the resource tab. It's going to have a drop down menu. You'll see recipes. Click that and then go through. Thank you for asking. We, we love sharing with y'all. So back to our corn mock chew. Our tomatoes, our tomatoes are starting to wilt. Our tomato sauce is binding all this together. We're getting some good juice. Now look, now this is the point where I'm just cooking this as a very simple side. But this is so versatile. You can do so many different things with it. Let's talk about it. A classic thing that a lot of people like to do with corn mock chew is add shrimp. So now would be the time if you had some nice beautiful shrimp, you could throw shrimp right into here. Let those cook along with, with the corn and the tomatoes and let them kind of uh, release some of their juices. And then that would actually make almost a great main if you had a bunch of shrimp in here. Um, you could do that. Another thing you could do is now you have a great base for a soup if you wanted to go in that direction, a corn mock chew soup. You could add a little bit of stock into here and then boil, let that kind of cook. Uh, chicken stock or a shellfish stock would be fantastic or a vegetable stock. A add that to here, they, there just to make it a little more loose. Let that cook and that would make a fantastic soup. You can come back if you wanted this more spicy. A little jalapenos, a little diced jalapenos, a little hot sauce. That would really kick it up and add some good spice. But I like it just kind of classic how it is. I'm going to come back with everything as it's cooking. Season it with a little bit of salt. Some black pepper in here. Really mix that up. And look, when y'all are seasoning, guys, I talk about, I harp on seasoning all the time. I talk about using good salt and high quality salts and this, that, and the other. And it's because salt and pepper to me is just so critical and one of those things that really makes or break a dish. So as we're seasoning, what you want to do is add a little bit of salt and pepper. And if you're new to cooking or even experienced to cooking like myself, you want to add a little taste, add a little taste. And that gives us a chance to really get, you really want to dial in your salt. I like to add salt and pepper. Of course, our preferences are going to differ. But what I like to do is I like to add salt and pepper till, oh, I, I taste a little spice. Boom, I stop adding the pepper. I taste some saltiness. I stop. So once I start to really taste it, then I know I have enough in there and it's not over salted and it's not under salted. But man, this right here is just looking so beautiful with all those colors. That beautiful corn. You got all those nice seasonings in there. We got those diced bell peppers of the different colors. And we got those tomatoes. So this, this is pretty much it. We come back, we season it. One thing we want to do last second is I have some nice, beautiful sliced green onions. I always like to add, whether it's parsley, whether it's green onions, whether it's delicate green herbs, I always like to add those in at the end. Um, the reason for that is because they're nice and bright and green, and if you add them in too early, what's going to happen is those vegetables and green vegetables are going to wilt, and they're going to uh, just kind of go away. Jesse's raised her hand. Looks like we've got another question. Man, y'all can keep hitting us up today. I love it. What you got, Jesse? Is there any kind of tomato that's better than another? Um, what I would say, to say is, first of all, thank you. Great question. Um, I would say use the tomato that you like the best because um, there is a lot of different varieties of tomatoes. Um, so any tomato that you like that is a great flavored tomato that you like, that's going to be best. I mean, unfortunately, if you go to just a, a regular old supermarket, that regular beefsteak tomato that they have, to me, in my personal opinion, isn't the best quality tomato because those tomatoes are bred to be able to ship across a country uh, and, and typically they're not ripe um, so, so, and, and they, lie, they lack a lot of uh, the flavor and depth of say something like an heirloom tomato or different homegrown tomatoes. I mean, uh, you know, right now we're just coming to the end of tomato season. I mean, there's nothing better than a homegrown tomato plucked right off the vine and then cut that right up and put in your salad. So there's no right or wrong. Use any tomato you have. You can't mess it up, but of course, 
like all cooking, any quality ingredient, a lot of times if you just get really nice quality ingredients, you're gonna help elevate a dish because you're just using better quality ingredients. A better quality tomato is gonna taste better than a regular uh, box tomato that you might have. So as I was talking earlier, we're not looking to cook this too much. We're just looking to have all these flavors kind of marry. You don't need to cook this. I mean, we're doing this in real time. I would say it's ready to go now. You can maybe cook it for another five or 10 minutes to really have all those flavors come together. But we're not looking to kill this corn by, by putting a lot of heat on it. So, so that's up to you how long you want to cook it. But I like having my corn to still have a nice crunch, still have a nice bright, fire, vibrant flavor. So I don't cook it too much. So this is good for me. So I'm going to come back to my plate and I am going to dish a nice scoop of this corn mock shoe, courtesy of our Native American ancestors. And then as far as the fish, let's finish up the fish. What I like to do, we have the fish kind of sizzling on our skillet. Just so, this, is just, this is something I would do at home. Just you, can't, just you don't have to make no big, heavy sauce, but I always love pairing a little something with your fish. So what I like to do is right as I'm finishing it, I got me a, a, a lemon in this juicer. I'm going to hit it with just a little bit of lemon juice, lemon and fish and seafood. You can never go wrong. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of lemon and then I'm going to put a, one pat of butter into the skillet and just let that mix with the lemon juice. So let's come back and let's put a little bit of this fish red fish that we have, nice, beautiful, fresh on there. And then let's come to our skillet. We have, what happens is we're now deglazing it. What, is that, what does that fancy term mean? Well, anytime we're cooking, you start to get little caramelized bits, little black bits on the bottom of your pan. Well, what, I, what, what separates a, a, or a, a novice chef or a novice cook to one that really wants to get as much flavor out of everything that we use is understanding that those little black bits in your bottom of your pans are concentrated little bits of flavor. So by adding the wine and then scraping the bottom of the pan with our spoon, we're able to lift up all those little bits and it actually turns this kind of brown, almost like a quick little Meniere sauce. And then we hit it with that, that lemon juice or wine, a little bit of butter, and then this is just a quick, simple sauce. But also I like to go ahead, put a little salt and pepper right in there too, because I'm just a nut for seasoning everything. And then this is just a real simple, quick and quick glaze that just goes, that you can do right at home. You're sauteing that fish. You don't have to go and buy any extra ingredients. This is gonna be just something that is perfectly pairs with that. I'm going to come back with a little more of our green onions on top as a little garnish. But this is, this is simple. This is an example of something that I would kind of whip up at home. Just some corn mock shoe, a little bit of basil oil, a little reduction on here. And there you go, guys. Corn mock shoe, and then we topped it off with a piece of sautéed redfish. Thank you all so much. Thanks, thanks to everybody out here who watched live, who gave us our comments. So glad to have you all. We just love having you all here. Um, come visit us here at Homeless House. Shout out to my wife, Teresa. It's her birthday today. I love you. I know she's watching live. Um, uh, we're going to have a great dinner tonight, and I'll see y'all next week, guys. Thank you.